everyone. Well, as you can see, my borders are sewn on. I got a little bit carried away with the twinkling stars and I sewed quite a few onto the borders. I like that, I'm quite happy with it, but that is optional. So now it's time to sew the binding onto our quilt. You can use a different colour if you want to, you're going to need 60 centimetres, but we are actually just going to finish our um, quilt using the same colour as our background fabric. So let's get started with the cutting out. So the binding on a quilt as you go quilt is a little bit different to a normal quilt because as you can see we've actually trimmed all the way to the edge of the borders. And the reason why I do that is because sometimes there's so much that you've got to remember to do. Trim the batting here, cut this there. So I just say just trim your fabric level with the edge of the borders. So that means that our strips are going to be a little bit different. So we're going to cut three inch wide strips. And so I've got my fabric here and I've already got a nice straight edge and I'm just going to, to make it a little bit easier to cut, I'm actually going to grab my selvages and I'm going to just fold it over to my already folded edge. And then I'm going to line it up on the board and I'm going to cut seven three inch strips. So your binding strips normally are two and a half inches, but I'm using three inches and you'll see why I do that once I start sewing them onto the quilt. So if you do want to cut your strips with your fabric folded over like this, it does make it a little bit easier to cut, but make sure that everything's nice and square so that when you open out the strips, they are going to be running in a nice straight line like that. So the next step is to join your strips. So we're going to join our strips just as I've shown you before. We're going to take our first strip, we're going to have the right side facing up, running on a horizontal, in a horizontal direction, and then we're going to take our next strip and it's going to have the right side facing down in a vertical direction. We're going to position them so that we've got about half an inch above and half an inch beyond that way. And then we're going to mark our line. So our, mark, our line always goes from the left out to the right. Last time we didn't mark the line, but I thought this time I'd show you how um, to mark the line. So just going like that from corner to corner. And then we've got our marked line. And we're just going to pop a pin in like that and we're just going to sew on the marked line. And so you can see when we open that out, our binding is running in a nice straight line there like that. And so all I'm going to do now is just trim away the, um, the excess there. So I've got a quarter inch seam allowance and then I'm going to press that open. But I'm just going to continue joining all of my strips together now. Joined all of my strips together. I've trimmed the seam allowance back to a quarter of an inch. I've pressed the seam open and now I'm pressing the entire length of the binding in half lengthwise with wrong sides together. And then once you've done that, just come back and trim away those excess little corners there. And now I'm going to head to the machine and sew the binding onto the edge of my quilt. So you've got two choices when it comes to sewing the binding onto your quilt. You can either sew the binding onto the front of your quilt and when we do that we're going to stitch it and then we're going to flip it over to the back and hand sew. Or if you want to machine sew, you can sew the binding onto the back of your quilt and then we're going to fold it over to the front and then we're going to machine sew it down. So I'm actually going to sew my binding onto the back of the quilt. When you're going to sew the binding onto the back of your quilt or onto the front, um, just start in a non-obvious place. So I like to start somewhere on the side towards the bottom edge. Now, the difference with this binding is that we're going to have our binding level, all the raw edges level with the edge of my quilt. And when I sew, I'm going to take a bigger seam allowance then your normal quarter of an inch, I'm actually going to take a three-eighths of an inch or one centimetre seam allowance. So have your machine threaded up with your size 80 quilting needle and your walking foot and just a thread to match. So sewing along like this 
if you've got the marking on your machine on the, the plate there you'll be able to easily guide that along now the trick with the corner is um, it's just like your traditional binding so I'm actually going to stop sewing one centimeter or three eighths of an inch away from the edge I like to use my little ruler here and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a little mark so there's my mark where I want to stop there and then I'm just going to sew to level with that and I'm going to stop exactly there and just cut my thread I'm then going to pivot the quilt or turn it around so I'm ready to sew onto my next edge and I'm going to flip up so when you flip up you want it to be on a 45 degree angle from the corner going down there so that's our flipping up and then we're going to flip back and when you fold it back you want that fold to be level with the edge of the quilt and then when you start sewing you start sewing exactly from the top edge of the quilt so start sewing exactly from the top edge of the quilt that's just going to give us room to be able to make our little mitre at the corners now when you're sewing your binding on I did mention before one of the really good things about a quilt to go quilt is that you don't end up having wavy edges everything's nice and square but just with the binding there hold it nice and firm and then sewing so I'm just going to continue sewing my binding all the way around the edge of the quilt until I reach my starting point and then I'm going to show you how we're going to join the binding together so I've sewn the binding all the way around the edge of the quilt and I've stopped so that I'm going to have a gap in the middle. So this is my start where I started off here. I left a six inch little tail and then I started sewing there. And then I finished giving myself about an eight inch or a 20 centimeter gap and another six inch tail. So to join my binding together on a bias grain, what I'm going to do is my starting binding, I'm going to open that out and using my ruler, I'm going to first of all locate the 45 degree angle on my ruler, which is there. So there's my 45 there. And I'm going to line that up with the edge of my binding. And I'm going to make a mark like that. Next step is I'm going to cut that. You know there's lots of different ways to um, finish your binding but um, this is probably the the way that you're going to have the least amount of bulk so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take my other piece of binding and i'm going to just line that up with the edge i've opened it up and then i've taken my piece here that i've already cut on a 45 degree angle and i'm going to line that up there and as you can see it's too hard to open it all the way out so I'm just going to make a mark at the beginning just at the starting point there like that next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get my ruler back again and I need to make myself a diagonal line and it's got to go in that direction there so sometimes it's just a matter of spinning your ruler around until you find the right way so I think I'm gonna to have to go like this okay so just spin your ruler around until you find your 45 degrees so it's going to be on the other side this time and what you can do is you can just mark that line there now that's how um, that's where it's going to join but we need some seam allowance so what you'll have to do is just come back from the other side and you need to make a mark which is half an inch away from our first line now the reason why we're doing half an inch we are actually going to join it with a quarter inch seam allowance but when we have that half inch it just gives us our quarter inch for that side and our quarter inch for that side there so now I'm going to mark on that make sure when you mark that extra line it's going towards the end of the binding don't mark it the other way or you won't have enough fabric so now I'm just cutting on that line Okay, so now the next step is to join that. So it's just a matter of opening it out, 
bringing my two edges together like that. This gets a little bit tricky when you're sewing this on your sewing machine. And you wouldn't start with your point lining up with the edge like that. You're going to slide your point along so that when you go to sew, that's actually going to be a quarter of an inch there. And you'll see you'll have the same thing on the other end. So it's just a matter now of pinning that and then going to the sewing machine and sewing that line there. I've sewn my join and now I'm just going to finger press that open like that and then I'm just going to fold my binding back in half again and you can see it fits nicely onto the edge of the quilt. So I'm just going to continue sewing that and then I'm going to show you how we're going to fold the binding over to the front of the quilt and machine sew it. I've turned my quilt over to the front and you can see now with my binding it's just a matter of bringing that around and making that level with the stitching line. I've used a lighter colour thread there just to make it easy for you to see. Now if you're going to hand sew your quilt you would have just worked the opposite way. Just like I mentioned, sew your binding to the front and then you're folding it over to the back so that the binding is meeting that stitching line and then you would just slip stitch that in place. To machine sew, it is a little bit of a challenge but I've got a couple of tips to help you um, if you did want to machine sew your binding. So you're going to see that with that one centimetre seam allowance when you fold the binding over it just fits nicely and I'm going to use some clips here and I'm folding over so I'm just meeting my stitching line like that. As I said I have used a lighter colour thread so that you can see that. And another thing I'm going to do is with my walking foot I've used an open toe um, sole plate for my walking foot and I've moved my needle position over so that I've got a little bit of a guide so if I bring my binding just over there to meet my stitching line then all I have to do is line up the binding on the inside edge of my foot and I should be able to just stitch along nicely like that. So the fold meeting the stitching line and then using that guide that I've worked out on my foot. If you don't have an open toe um, foot to go with your walking foot, it's just a matter of finding a guide on your walking foot. I know everyone's machine is different and you've just got to find that guide. So as I'm approaching the corner, I'll just grab my quilt before it falls off the table. I'm just going to let my mitre just come straight down and I've got my 45 degree angle there with it. And just taking it nice and slow. So once I get to there, I'm then going to fold up and I'm going to use my stiletto there just to hold everything in place. I've just done one stitch onto the binding that's coming in the other direction and then it's just a matter of turning. You can see that's folding nicely there. Everything's fitting quite nicely there. Just going to sew a little bit further so that I can flip that over and sew you the other side or show you the other side. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the trick, just making sure that the folded edge actually meets the stitching line. And you would also use the same colour thread in your bobbin so that your stitching line doesn't stand out like mine. <laughs> <laughs> 
so we should be able to fold that over now and once again I've used the um, other colour thread in my bobbin just so that it stands out and so that you can see that. So it's just a matter of stitching all the way around the edge of your quilt and that's a nice quick way to finish your binding off. There are different ways, lots of different ways that you can finish the binding on your quilt. I just showed you my way, um, but you can of course finish the quilt the way that you want to. So here we are, our quilt is all finished now, we've got the binding on. So I did mine by a machine, but of course you can do yours by hand and in the way that you like it. So that brings us to the end of our course and we just want to thank you all for being part of it. We have enjoyed ourselves. Um, big thank you to Alora behind the camera there. She's got some great close-up shots. So if you want to find out more about what we're doing, make sure you sign up to our website, which is www.patternpool.com and follow us on Facebook and on Instagram too. And if you want to share your quilts, um, your work, your progress, your finished quilts, share it onto um, Instagram or on Facebook with the hashtag of um, Twilight Dreaming by Pattern Pool. Thanks everyone. Bye now.